Okay. Um, yes, Don Petrosa here on a request for an extension on two appeals under um, Act 46. It's appeal number 2789 and appeal number 2833. Uh, Paul Mastro Pieri and or Rite Aid Corporation were the applicants for relief. Uh, relief was granted in both, both of these cases. On uh, 2789, it was granted on October 16, 2008 and extensions have been granted, the last, which, the last of which takes us through November 21, 2010. On appeal number 2833, that was a request for a special exception for the uh, drive-through window for the right aid. Uh, that relief would not expire until January 29, 2011. And I'm not sure whether you've had other requests under Act 46. Uh, you may have. Yes, or, we have. Okay. Uh, basically, as, as I read it, it, it's an automatic suspension of the expiration period and it gives the applicant the um, option of requesting a confirmation or a written verification from the board that the approvals are still in effect and that the approvals do not expire until I believe it's July 2nd, 2013. And that's what we've requested. Okay. And we don't have to be concerned with a start date on that. It just ends Correct. July 2nd, 2013. When did that start by? John, when Is your mic on? No, it's not. No. Act 46, which was enacted by the legislature to address the recession and to keep yes, projects I, I, I and understand. all I that. The act. What but the, the, what's the start date? In other words, it, it didn't go back if you were 2007. What was it when? January um, 1, 2009. If your approval was, an exi was, a lot, was valid on January 1, 2009, mm -hmm. it is automatically extended. Uh, the applicant doesn't need it, it to be here, but if they want written confirmation, then they, right. they pay a fee and they can get one from us, as with any other agency. Okay. In other approved. words, it doesn't make any difference when the initial one was, even if they, they've got an extension after that 2009 date, right? Yes, in other words, it's, it's, as it's long as the approval was in force at any time <coughs> from and after January 1, 2009. So if you had an ex approval that was granted in 2007 and by a couple of extensions had or gotten to January 1, 2009, then it's subject to Act 6, 46. Right. Any, anything between December, th uh, okay. after December 31st? I, mean, I, yeah. I understood yeah. what it did. I just didn't know if it was, it if, if you had prior to the 2009 date, if there was an extension then, you know, did that, did you fall into that category? Yeah, it, it, as long as it's in effect during that yeah. period of time, the yeah, extension period. If we granted an approval for the per, oh, per right, an extension. Yep. Okay. Then, extension. Any comments from the board? So it's uh, granted then. Thank you very and much. And you'll get a letter regarding uh, that. That's what you requested, correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Before we talk about the next one, we have some special guests here, Don. If you could open the door for them. <laughs> Good morning. We have some special guests here today. They're uh, from the Cub Pack Troop 219, correct? Hi, Hi guys. <laughs> they can stay if they would like. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Look at yourselves on TV up there. Wow. Civic learning in action there. I think they should have stayed too, but I guess we didn't want to bore them. <laughs> okay, next we have another letter from Faye and Timothy Franklin, to whom it may concern. We graciously request a six-month six extension on our zoning application that was approved in April. Uh, ne necessary due to the recent birth of our baby girl, July 14, 2010. The consequential time restraints limiting our ability to do the required building research and financial considerations. Yours sincerely, Faye and Timothy Franklin. Are you're here? Yes. Okay. Any uh, things you would like to add to that? Uh, no, that pretty much explains everything we're looking for. 
to be that baby girl in July and just kind of congratulations <laughs> thank you it just kind of uh, made things very difficult as far as planning to get it done and then I guess this act 46 also helps, yes so. now uh, from what I understand if you want a formal written letter stating that this is extended there is a fee involved with that uh, is that correct yeah John? this is an extension uh, th this is just requesting a six-month extension Mm -hmm. uh, I guess which we've granted without a fee. Uh, if they want an act, uh, Act 46, as you know, extends things through July 1, 2013. And the township does have an ordinance that if you wish to apply for that, you have to write a letter stating the date that you think it expires, which would be normally July through July 1, 2013 is valid. There's some other things in the act that it would extend it further. I don't know if they apply. And then you have to pay the fee. But I guess you can simply ask for a six-month extension. Uh, by the way, the, uh, as we were discussing, the extension is automatic under Act 46. The reason people like to come in for extensions, particularly for you know, commercial properties, is to have a piece of paper from the issuing agency that says they understand that. So uh, what we have before us is a six-month extension, our normal six-month extension. and if. Uh, that's good enough for tonight. We can proceed on that basis. But you is that sufficient? Yeah, we appreciate that. It just okay. allows to get things right. a little bit more in sure. order. It's been a little hectic the last. Any uh, questions or comments from the board? No. no. All those in favor? Yes. Okay. Thank so you it's very much. Thank you. So I do not need to write an Act 46 order for that. Okay. All right, the first and only item on our agenda tonight is Appeal 2842. The applicant, Gail Blower, located at 225 Lansdowne Avenue, Wayne, PA, is owned R3, seeks a variance from the provisions of the zoning code section 28025D1 to allow the existing porch to continue to extend up to six feet into the 16-foot side yard on the south side of the historic building and approving the subdivision of 225 lands down in the two lots by resolution 2006-37 dated November 27, 2006, the Board of Commissioners imposed a condition that no building permit would be issued for the subdivided lot 227 lands down unless the porch is modified to comply with the side yard setback requirement or the zoning board allows the porch to encroach into the side yard setback. If the variance is not granted, the applicant will remove a portion of the porch. Mr. Greenfield. Thank you. Uh, members of the board, Jim Greenfield for the applicant. Uh, the, uh, applic the application indicated that we expected the porch to extend up to six feet into the side yard. It's actually only four feet. I went back and uh, remeasured it by scale, and it's, uh, if you look on the plan, would you like to um, introduce your exhibits and number them for the record? Um, At this point in time, or do you want to do it as you go along? Well, I know the plan was attached to the application, so I'm assuming everyone has a copy of that. Yes. Uh, and I, I'm not going to have any additional exhibits beyond uh, what was attached to the application. So I, I can introduce them, and then we can designate them as exhibit okay. numbers. Uh, the plan should be A1. And uh, we have a, I don't have a handheld. Okay. If you look at the, uh, hmm? is the rest of your application going to be? Oh, we have photos and stuff. Right? Would the application and the deed be A two? The application itself. Uh, yeah, I mean, you you wish you, that's commonly put in as an exhibit. We could make that. You want to make that a board exhibit, or, or? you make that board? We we'll make it B one. Okay. Which one was that? The Just application. Just the application, and then the deed uh, will be part of that. Uh, I'm not including the uh, HARB certificate or the photos. I assume you'll want to bring those in sure. separately. <coughs> oh, we have a handheld mic here for you. Oh, thanks. Were the photographs numbered? Um, are you going to do that as you go along? We'll do, we'll do that as we go. Okay. Okay. I mean, I'm just thinking we, we have it right now. We can think the photographs A3 and the HARB certificate A2 if you have nothing else. That's fine. Okay. okay. These yeah. will be A3. 
Um, if you look at the plan uh, and you're looking at the lot that has the existing dwelling on it, that was lot one of the subdivision. That's 225 Lansdowne. Uh, you'll see on the plan to the south side of the house, uh, you'll see designated an existing wall, and that's the edge of the porch. And if you look to uh, that wall, it extends um, four feet into the 16-foot side yard. This is an R3, so you have a requirement of two side yards, two side yards aggregate 35 feet, minimum 15 feet each. We have a 19-foot side yard on the north side of the house, so that leaves us with a 16-foot requirement on the south side where the porch is located. And the porch does extend four feet into that side yard. Uh, Where did the 16 feet come from? Well, that was, I, I, uh, when I originally measured it, I had considered the possibility that um, some of what extended to the east was porch, but that's all walkway. So it's not part of the structure. So you would stipulate that the extension will be no more than four feet into that 16 feet? Correct, just, just where 16 the existing feet. porch is. Uh, are the plans for the new house already drawn? I mean, you know where that's going? Uh, yes, the plans for the new house are, are drawn and have been approved by HARB, and that's the certificate that we've had marked as, I believe, A3 or mm -hmm. A2. A3. No, that was A2. I'm A2. Sorry. Photos are A3. Yes, uh, Gail Flower, the applicant, took that to HARB and got uh, immediate approval on that. She's going to build that house in Victorian style to be in concert with the rest of the neighborhood. And where's their side yard relative to that side? Is it 20 feet? Um, We don't, we don't know, but the, Did you want to swear in your witnesses? Yes. Uh, Gail, do you want to stand and be sworn? Stand and be sworn. Right here. Please should you sign this bill of the affirm the testimony of Dr. Gibbs will be received to host the document of the court. I do. And state your name for the record. Gail Blower. Um, we do have that information. What, on the, on the new um, house? Yeah. But what we know is we're observing the two side yards that will equal 35 feet total, correct? That's correct. Yeah. Can we make, can we make that side yard so that it, it would make up the four feet that you're in? I don't know the answer that, to that. Can we make that stipulation? Do you want to use the mic there? Pull that uh, over towards you. Good, thank you. What, they would have to In other go, words, we'll, the you know, building back. Pete so. and I think that maybe um, since they're encroaching four foot on that side and they don't have the 35 foot aggregate, maybe they can make up that lost four feet in the aggregate in the new house. So on that north north side, right? Right. The north side of that house would be that four feet that you're losing on the other side. That way, at least they're maintaining the differences in the side yard between the two houses. Meaning at least 19 feet on that side. Um, if well, it would have to be it would be 24 feet. Yeah, you have to show 20. 24 feet. Because she only has by the drawing is only 15 feet on the south side, and therefore she needs 20 feet on the north side. To meet the aggregate, so what we're saying well, is, no, not necessarily. if everybody if, if everybody's meeting their requirements, the houses will be 35 feet apart. Put your mic on. Right. Hey, his mic is on. It's on. Okay. The houses will be 35 feet apart. Um, Actually, the they you know could be 30 feet if you put the 20 foot yard on the other side. It's uh, it, but the the, res the requirement is is the minimum is 15 yeah. and the aggregate is 35. Correct. And what Charlie and I are thinking is, if you have the houses 30 feet apart, then so you now you've met the He's distance make up the four net foot on on the, the north other side. So that would you'd mean you're saying 24? So yeah. The right. So that's the 20. That's the aggregate, aggregate side, right? Because the other one only has 15 feet. I think the question is the house that you're going to build is that go, filling up your building envelope? Do you have space to shift it? A little bit to one side I don't know the answer to that I would have to work with the architect on that we did you have it. that plan here we do not have you that plan have here. here okay but I mean would you make a stipulation that 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 will exist if we gave you the uh, variance I I don't know that I can agree to that right now because I don't it, know what the impact okay. would be just, we just have so a drive just so you know yeah. that it, it may affect you know some votes I'm not saying it will yeah. but I'm just saying that you know 
And I, I mean, this is this is kind of a this is kind of a uh, owner um, hardship. This isn't something that was there. You kind of made this hardship by subdividing your lots and by the placement of them. So, you know, and this board's only gives relief, the minimal amount of relief based on hardship, but not hardship imposed by the individual themselves. So, you know, you really have no hardship here. At least that I don't see, unless you've got something you're gonna tell me there's a hardship. Well, there is a hardship. The okay. hardship is that if we don't get the relief, we have to remove a portion of the But that's, that's, that's not, house. that's not, that's, that's not our concern as a hardship. You, it's a hardship you it's, made. It's not a financial no, hardship. No, no, it's a self-created hardship yeah, is the point. We, we hardship. That we, that there was no problem until the, the That's right. Created the need for the relief. We acknowledge Okay. That. But there is a hardship. No. The hardship is but yeah, there's but no the right to relief from a self-created hardship as a matter of law. No, I understand. Plus, I think you were aware of the hardship going into it we and before you started. We I assume before you started designing the other house because it was part of the commissioner's requirement that the uh, porch come within oh, the... We were, uh, we were certainly okay. aware of right. the situation on this lot. What we were not aware of when Gail went to have the house designed for lot two, which is 227 Lansdowne, is that the board might consider imposing an additional side yard on lot two. Well, no, they're just, they're just exercising the side yard that's there. They're not imposing the side yard. It's, I mean, that's the ordinance says 35 foot aggregate 15 minimum, I mean, you know, they, they, they're just maintaining what the ordinance is. Yeah, I think the distinction is that the, the, the um, failure to meet the ordinance is on the lot that has the existing house, not the lot that has the proposed house. Correct. But we're looking to make up for the harm caused by one by possibly picking it up on the other to create the same visual, right. visual spacing between the, the homes. Now, unfortunately, that's a narrow building envelope you already have there, much narrower than the other house. And, you know, that may wind up affecting their ability to build a, an attractive Victorian-style home. Not, yeah. You also, if, we, if, if, if the board were to pursue a condition like that, there'd have to be some way of imposing it on the owner of Lot 2 with some sort of recorded uh, uh, instrument or something like that, because the... Uh, the relief is there for the benefit of lot one, and we're, you're trying to impose a condition on lot two. Yeah, but lot, lot, lot is owned by lot one. But it won't be forever. Yeah. Well, I know, but they're, it seems like they're designing the house and building it. You could even have, the house, have house two on the side yard setback such that it meets the aggregate between the two homes at each point along the way so that there would be just like the porch intrudes into the but the rest of the house doesn't intrude into the setback oh okay so what That's you're what saying, saying then is that the only place we would need the additional setback on lot two is where the porch is that's another thought yes so you don't shave the whole house you just shave part of it Or you could also slide house two back a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure where you're placing it on the lot, but if uh, it was set back a little bit from. Pardon me? Yeah. No, I'm saying uh, slide, not side to side, but back. Another so that the porch is sticking out in the front part a little bit more. The house is set behind it. And the back? In the front, I'm not sure which is the front, which is the back. So the patio also. So it's kind of like. Yeah, well, patio could be fixed. Let me, uh, I just want to uh, ask the flower one question. Sure. If the condition is that the extra four feet only applies to the portion of the house on lot two, directly faces the porch, that's fine. We, we, can, we can maneuver it to make that work. How does the board feel about that? I, I'd be comfortable with that. You would be? I would. I'd hate to see the porch come off. I mean, it's a beautiful home, uh, and I hate to see the porch come off. It is a self-imposed hardship, but to make an accommodation, I'd be okay as long as the buildings are far enough apart. I think the neighbors buy a home on that street 
expecting the houses are going to be a certain distance apart, and I'd like to see that maintained. We certainly want to do everything we can to maintain the amenities in there. That's been the plan all along. Noah, did you have any thoughts? No, I agree that uh, I've been on that porch, and uh, it certainly would damage the look of the house, play havoc with the roof line. If they were to lop that porch off, that would be a crime. So uh, whatever we could do to make it work it would certainly be aesthetically pleasing to the environment. And uh, that seems like a good way to work it. Now, how we can work the details of that without seeing what they propose with the other house is going to be a little dicey. So how, do you, how are you going to define that? Because over time, if you just say it's the part that corresponds with the existing porch on the other house, over time the other house could be altered. Mm -hmm. That porch could be extended back or forward or whatever the law would allow. So how would you but that, govern wouldn't that? Wouldn't they have to then come in for a variance? Although it could kind of slip by because they wouldn't be expanding the nonconformity. That's right. They would just be I, I just, taking it I back just, or forward. I just sometimes get get a little a little discouraged when individuals and not necessarily you this happens a lot of people kind of do this they do things and then say well you know we kind of have a problem here I, I just you know and it seems to happen more and more all the time that where people have self-imposed hardships and then we're supposed to correct it um, you know I, I if everybody feels about that way I, I, I'd go along with it but I just I just think that the amount of money people are going to pay for this house that you're going to build because I'm sure it's going to be as nice if not nicer than the house that you have now um, you, you know just having no no ground no side yard or it, that kind of bothers me you know they look out the window and they're going to see they're going to see you on your patio I, I just think that those extra feet gives everybody a little bit more privacy well the it's owner of that money. house can vote with his pocketbook I'm not really worried about the person buying the house because if he thinks it's too close he won't buy the house but you worry about the neighbors and, and maintain right. the standards that the zoning district contemplated when it was uh, created and specified. Well, as soon as you get one house, the other ones seem to follow through. Are you building this house? Are you going to be the developer of it? And then you're going to sell it? Yes and no. <laughs> okay. I'll sell it when I die. I mean, I'm planning on moving into it. Oh, then what's going to happen to the existing house? I, depending on my finances, I keep it and lease it out. I have three adult children or I sell it. So your intention is to keep them both? At the moment, my intention is okay. to keep them both. Well, then you're totally in control of what happens on both. That's correct. Yeah. So I think then there's really no reason why they shouldn't be able to make I, up the deficiency on the other side. The, the decision, though, I mean, the odd, the odd thing is that if there was a violation on lot two, uh, you know, the, in the terms of building with what the ordinance permits them to build, the impact is not on lot two, but on lot one, because it's lot one's improvements that are permitted to exist on the basis of restrictions being imposed on lot two. And so you have to have some way to make sure that nothing on lot two uh, uh, occurs that uh, voids the variance, because otherwise then they've either got to get a, the, the, the variance, uh, uh, try to get a variance again, which they, you know, you'd have all the self-created hardship and all of that those issues, or they'd have to lop off the porch. So uh, I think something would have to be put a record. Could it be on two. the plans, the recorded plans? It's got to be in a place and that, the subdivision. I, I, it's got to be in a place where a you know a the, a purchaser of either uh, home is able to pick it up, and I think the only place you can do that is the recorder of deeds. Indeed. They're not yeah. required to, the, well. the township files are not something that a, a, a purchaser of real estate is required to search in order to find a building restriction. But the subdivision plan is required to be recorded in the recorder's office. And a yep. notation there would put somebody on the duty of inquiry. Well, that if so, you put it on the subdivision it, plan, they'd have to go yeah. then and amend the subdivision plan That's to right. show the condition. That yeah, would work. I think so. You mean amend it before the board of commissioners? Yeah, you'd have to go and amend it before the board of commissioners I because mean, you have really to put a note. Want to do that. What we would rather do is have this board come up with some language that thinks it's appropriate, and we could record an instrument related to lot two. But and lot one. We, we do not want to have to go back to the approval. Yeah. You know, we're put on the spot because the commissioners chose to grant the approval 
and then make it subject to these alternative conditions, a variance or physical alteration, as opposed to saying, you decide what you want to live with now, we'll either approve it as a narrower lot and maintain the legal sideline, the legal side yard, or uh, you go get your variance first and then come back here and we'll entertain. They, they kind of put it in our, in our hands, but really this is a consequence of the subdivision. It's not a, uh, it's they, not the other way around. You, now but they the, could, you could, we could impose a condition that the, the variant, if you were to, if the board wishes to grant the variance with this condition, that it's subject to, to the applicant preparing an instrument to be recorded against bo bo both properties that imposes this condition that is subject to the, you know, it could be my approval or the township solicitor's approval, probably mine. But in other words, they could write it and I could, you know, make sure it does what the board wants to do. You know what the difficulty with that might be, John, is that uh, let's say 10 years down the road, the property's in different hands and someone violates it. Uh, the owner of lot two at that time violates it. What are the consequences? How do we enforce this well, I think by going to the then owner of lot one and saying, you now have to knock down part of your porch? Well, I think that they would, it would probably have to be uh, a, uh, an, an agreement that could be uh, enforced by either lot owner. It also could be enforced by the township uh, in, uh, uh, as well. And but doing what? Undoing the subdivision? <laughs> No, specific informants of it, specific uh, performance of if the owner of lot two builds so as to cause a violation, the township can make him take it down. I mean, that, that can be drafted. There isn't anything that can yeah. be drafted. I, I must say we're putting in documents that right. would shame the Sears Tower, but uh, you can put a document together that would do that. Well, it's not the Sears Tower anymore. That's the biggest reason why you can't change it. It's the Willis Tower now or something. They can say that. It's the Sears Tower. <laughs> but again, let me, let me say one thing. If you want to impose a restriction like that, it shouldn't be 24 feet. It should be 19 feet on that side because the owner of Lot 2 in perpetuity, whoever that's going to wind up being after uh, Kiel gets finished with it, wouldn't be entitled to, be, to have anything more than 15 feet theoretically. Want to add four feet to make it to account for the four feet the porch goes. You'd be supposed to have 35 foot aggregate. She's got 15 foot on one side, which means she's got to have 24, 20 feet on the other side. It's 35 foot aggregate. I think what he's saying is that could have been the 15 foot wide lot if it had been more on the other side. She has the option to make her side yard 20 feet on the south side of the yeah, lot, too. That's fine. To meet the 35 foot requirement. In other words, her, her side yard on the north side of lot two could be as little as 15 feet under code. So what I'm saying to you is you want to require it to be 19 feet just for that section of the house that abuts the porch. Well, yeah. we're, we're good with that. Yeah, but I'm not so good with the with the offset of, you know, I mean, I, 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 I know it'll never get checked. I mean, I, you know, I drive past places now that we've said this is what they got to do, and it's 10 years now, and they haven't done it. So no one's ever, you know, once you get this thing, five years from now, um, you know, we're all, we're all sitting somewhere drooling out of our mouth. Somebody's going to come in and say, I want a variance. Uh, I want a special exception, you know, at, at 101B because I'm not going to increase the, the nonconformity that I have there now. You know, and so that, that's his porch that used to jag in and out is no longer going to jag in and out. That's not going to happen. But it shouldn't I, I mean, I see it, it happen all the time. It shouldn't be nonconforming. Well, no, what I'm, saying is, what I'm saying is if it will be if we say you can put the porch as long as it's back so far on that side. They'll come in and say, well, I want to expand my house, and it's only, I'm not going to increase the line that's already there. So now we've, they've defeated what, we want, what our intention is. You know? um, well, if you record this and you record it with deeds on it, so you also place a copy of it. Yeah, but the they'll, still come, in, they'll still come in and say, you know, the, the next five people up here are going to see it as you know, a, an increase of a nonconformity, and they're going to get it as a 101B. I mean, I, I see it But it will be time. in the file. None, none, be, of okay. us, none of us can control what might happen 15 or 20 years later. Correct, but I can control what's happening, stuff. but I have, I have a vote as to what's going to happen tonight. Well, we can control it now just by saying it's a self-created hardship and no relief and, and is in order. I'm still of the mind, I'm still of the mind that, you know, somewhere between, you know, four feet and some number, you know, they got to make sure that the house does not, you know, drops back that extra footage 
on the envelope. That's, that's where I'm coming from. I think that's an easier thing to control over time because then the line's there. You know, there's, if they want to extend it across there, they've got it. Um, and it, no one has to worry about it in the future. How about reducing the building envelope on lot two by two feet? The width at that point. I, I don't think that's re a reasonable restriction. I, I think that if you want to say, because of the additional porch on the south side of lot one, that we can't come within 19 feet of the property line on the north side of lot two, that makes sense. But to cut our building envelope by two feet on a lot where there's no nonconformity, to me, is not fair. I don't think that's a reasonable restriction. If you want us to observe 19 on that side, that's fine. Why would we make it 19 on that side? Because, because we could, by law, build a house that observes a 15-foot side yard from the, from the north property line to lot two. Only if you put 20 on the other side. Yeah, you really Are you willing to, to do that? Well, but we have to observe 35 feet. Well, then you're going to have to revise your plan. Because right now you don't show that. You don't show a 20-foot uh, yard on, 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 on the south side. No, he shows. I think what he's saying is he wants to be able to float the building envelope back and forth, uh, you know, north to south, as long as he maintains 35 feet. 35 feet. Yeah. I mean, in all places there will be an aggregate, but it'll jog. Is that? Well, no. I don't think that's is, decent. What we're saying is we will maintain uh, two side yards. Well, totally that, why would you? Feet. Why would you give up? Why would you give up um, five feet on the south side for two feet on the north side? That that's. Yeah, I mean, don't shake your head. That's no, what no, you're I don't doing. The well, I mean, you're saying that you're, on the south side you're going to make it 20 feet, and 15 feet on the north side. Isn't that what you're saying? No. What, what I'm saying is that that's what we're entitled to do. That if you want us to observe 19 on the north side, then we would create 16 on the south side for an aggregate of 35. I don't see why we should lose building envelope on lot two. If well, the, because because you subdivided and you, and you brought the, ha the the hardship upon yourself, I, you're, I, you know you're, you're making the money on the on the thing, you know, and you're and you're kind of saying to the township, you know what, um, we're going to subdivide it, but we don't we don't want to lose anything, you know, we want our cake and we want to eat it, and we also want dessert. So the commissioner said that. you can have your cake and eat it as long as the zoning board lets you do it. Well, that's right, and, and we're <laughs> just saying, you know, you got you got to put a little something into the deal, and we're asking you to put something into the deal, and you're not willing to do that. Well, we have an option. The option is to say and we have an option shop, also. We have we, an option we can also. Shop four feet off the porch if the board wants us to do you know, that. that. You may have to. Do, if, if you're willing to do that for two feet, then you know what. You know, you, that might be my vote. I don't think we want you to do that. I think you're phrasing it the wrong way, sir. We don't want you to do that. We, we're trying to cooperate with you, but we're, we're trying to preserve the character of the community established in the zoning district. We're very sensitive to that. It's proven by the fact that Gail went to Harvard and got approval of a Victorian house on lot two. I don't know where the two feet comes from. That's where I'm lost. Well, I, I'm trying to come up with a compromise from the four feet is what I'm trying to do. Now, you know, I mean, I'll go back to the four feet if that's what you want. Now, in other words, we're to, you're, you're out four feet on lot one. You're extending into the side yard by four right. feet. For part of We're the saying give us half that on lot two by reducing your building envelope by two feet. On the north side. The entire building envelope. Well, you're so instead on of having side, 35 feet, you're going to have 37 feet. Basically, that's what it comes to. Between the two. Uh, oh, you mean on, on that lot itself. And instead of having 35 between the two houses, they'll have 33. Right. Okay. In other words, instead of, instead of the aggregate being 35, it's going to be 37. They, they can take it wherever they want. It, it so you'll give, up, you'll give up the, f the four feet, in tr uh, four foot intrusion. Right. But, the Nord but he's going to make up two foot of it in the. He's trading the a four foot encroachment on one side for a two foot reduction How, in the yes. Reduction in building envelope. Right. How's that any different than saying, let's do a four foot? Because we're concerned Induction about maintaining that in the future with a uh, cutout that goes like this. I think this, this, this proposal would basically give them the variance for two feet, but then they've got to adjust the, the, yep. the yards on the uh, on, the, on lot two on lot two right. yeah, by covenant. To pick up the other yeah. two feet. If that's right. what I understand. 
Do you know what the width, I don't have a ruler here, what is the it width of the uh, building of the building? Uh, it looks kind of like it's a 39 point oh, oh, the floor, no, oh, the, 39, the, okay. So that would reduce it to 37. Yeah, well, on, on here, like you had here. You know, like if you'd done that, it would, it would be easier for us maybe to explain what we want done, you know. Yeah, and, and all we're trying to do is, is maintain, you know, the, the character of the neighborhood and the houses, you know. And, and, and I think you start putting big houses too close to one another, and you, you wind up with Drexel Hill. Uh, you know, and, and it, 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 it comes back to... No, nope. not that there's anything wrong with that. No, Drexel, I mean, I live there. <laughs> and I just, you just, you don't have any yards, you know. I mean, look, we still, we have zoning here. We're going to refer from side yards to any event. But I think maybe the answer, because we don't have the building plan for lot two in front of us, and the plan that we gave you is the subdivision plan. Mm -hmm. And at that point, we had no site plan for lot two. We now have one. Well, maybe so you should come back next month. Well, that's what we're thinking. Okay. If you'll you know, the only thing we're saying is, is that in, instead of it being, you know, we just want you to move it two foot, like the envelope, two foot less on that one side. That's you're, it. You're saying that. Yeah. yeah. In other words, you would want to have a set, what you're really saying. This is all just a discussion, of course. We're not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the, what, what I hear you saying is that the minimum yard on the north side of lot two would be 17. No, that would well, be if they made the south side 20 feet. I mean, they could leave the south side 15 feet, and it would be 22 foot there. Yeah, but the minimum. In other words, if you want to keep right. the, the spacing of a minimum of 15 feet, and the, the minimum spacing between the two houses, assuming there was enough room, would be 15 feet on the southern side of uh, lot one and 15 feet on the northern side of lot two. If you're looking to get... Not, not only the aggregate yard, but the minimum spacing between these two houses. Mm -hmm. Seems to me you have to add two more feet. Right, it'd be so 17 you, on the south. So it always has to be, so it's still 30 right, feet. Right, it'd be, it'd be 17 on the north side of lot two and 20 foot on the south side of lot two. No, they gotta get to, they, they'd be in, No, no. Really? So, yeah, uh, yeah because right. it, it, yes, it's you're the right. aggregate, right? They need a 37 foot aggregate. Yeah. I don't, I don't care how they do it. They need 37 feet. But they also have to have at least 17 feet of those oh, to the on north. the north side. Right. At least 17 feet. Right. So, right. Be, so the minimum on the north side would be 17, and then they would need 20 on the south, or they can leave 15 on the south and make it 22 on the north. Yes. However, however you want to do that. But except it always has to be 17 feet on the north. Right. Okay, so we're, we're down to 17 on the north? Well, uh, that's if you make the south 20. We're saying that you can't move the, the house further you know, closer to the northern line than 17 feet, because if you do, you won't have the two buildings at least 30 feet apart. Which, in effect, right. is reducing your building envelope by two feet. See, I mean, our, I guess our thinking was we still don't quite understand the rationale for taking two feet off the building envelope. It's a compromise. This, I, well, I understand. Would it make more sense to take four feet off? Well, no. There's a good rationale for that. Well, sure. But I, yeah. But if that's the alternative, then our decision Well, if you've already designed the house, you've already made that decision. You're going ahead taking the porch off if you don't get this relief, well, no. if you've paid the money to design the house. We may be able to move the envelope of the house to comport with the requirement that we observe a few additional feet on the north side of Block 2, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we should lose building envelope. And the decision that we're ultimately going to have to make is from a dollar's stand mm -hmm. cent standpoint, does it make sense to give up all that square footage in the new house uh, and how, how much, how big is the house? Do what? we use pretty much the whole building envelope in lot two and the plan? Is there a porch? Is yes, the porch there is a porch. So the porch is going to be, the porch is going to be two feet smaller on the north side. Where right? Is, Isn't that, so you're not, you're not losing anything in the house. You're losing two foot on a porch. Yeah, the trouble is this lot two is, is got, is, 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 is four and a half feet narrower. Yes, lot it's a narrow lot. That's, that's not our fault. No, I, I'm just it's saying. It's not our fault, John. Look, look, look. It's not Everybody, causing I a problem. We just have to build a smaller house. No, no, no. They can keep the same house. They need to cause a smaller porch on the north side, because that's what. If the porch be the is on the. No, north no. We side. don't know what the design oh, okay. of the new house yeah. is. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah. So we don't know that that's okay. porch. So even if, even if the porch is on the south side, <clears throat> it's still two feet shorter. Yeah, Charlie, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not advocating anything. I'm just pointing right. out that okay. the two lots are not the same. It's hard for us to really uh, visualize this without seeing the plan for the new house. 
I mean, that's we're not playing with a full deck. Would uh, you, you prefer to, to come back next month with I, the I other plan? I think that makes sense because we don't have a plan for one, two in front of us, and I can't. Okay. Stand, standing here, I can't tell you what's going to happen. Well, rather than make a rash decision, yeah, I think maybe that's what you should do. You're going to lose two foot of a porch. So think about your options. You know, and, and basically, if it's the mirror, Im if the houses are mirror images of one another, okay, that means that that you're really looking at the the one porch is going to be two foot smaller. That's it. I'd like to remind the board we could have discussions of stuff, but the vote doesn't take place, and we can't, you know, offer an assurance at this stage of the game mm -hmm. as to what the vote would be. They, you know, they've heard the views of the uh, the applicants, heard the views of the board, and if they wish to go back and come up with a proposal that you know meets what they hear the board saying, that's fine. But I, I you know, we, we still have a free, unfettered vote. If, mm -hmm. You know, when we come to that time. If, if there is one more piece of information I'd kind of like to have. Has anybody looked into whether the, there's any historical restrictions on the ability to lop this porch off? Is this house protected in any way by any historical regulations? I, I can tell you the answer to that is, is probably no, because there are no restrictions in the code on things like that. We don't have any protections in our ordinances about the, not necessarily the zoning ordinance, to protect historic structures? Why did you go to Harb for the new house? And this is a very old house. And that, really does, that, that doesn't, HARB doesn't apply on the negative side of well, removing something? We do have a, an approval, subdivision approval from the Board of Commissioners right. that explicitly says that we have to lop off a portion of the porch. Okay. Or get the variance before you can get a building permit. It doesn't say you may take off the porch. It says before a you may get a building permit, you must either get the variance or remove the offending yeah, portion. But it doesn't give you the authority to remove the offending portion. That's why I'm asking, is that a separate issue? I respectfully disagree with you. If the, if the board, we have to assume the Board of Commissioners was cognizant of what's in the ordinance, and it explicitly told us to remove the board. should never assume there. anything. So, I mean, <laughs> maybe, yeah. uh, we won't go there. At least I got you to smile. I mean, from, from, looking, from looking at what's attached to your application, I don't get that from there. What it, what, no, but let's, let's just read what it says. I don't think there's any other it way says that the porch be modified as shown on the plan before a building permit will be issued for the new construction of Lot 2 unless the applicant receives approval, et cetera. That's correct. That the porch be modified before a building permit will be issued. Correct. But it doesn't say, that, it doesn't say anything about whether you met all legal requirements to remove the no, porch. I, I don't agree. I, I, we, could, we could take okay. the four feet off that porch right now based on that approval and we'd be done. I don't think so. I think what you could do is if you if the other house weren't there, if it burned down tomorrow, then this would go away because you wouldn't need to deal with the fact that you had two houses and that one of them was offended. I don't understand why you wouldn't say, well, agree to two feet off of the, the, the new porch. Because, because uh, cause you're not losing any square footage of the house. You're, you're, losing, you're going to lose two feet on the north side or the south side of a porch. Let me, my understanding, I haven't seen the plan for a while. My understanding is that porch on the house on lot two does not go all the way along the north side of the house. That it well, is similar it's not to a mirror the, image of the house. It well, doesn't go no, it is a mirror image. Yeah, it goes mine part, doesn't go part of the way around the house, right? right? Yeah, it goes part of the way along the north it, side but, of the house. But even if it goes one foot on the north side of the house or two feet, then you just get rid of the porch and it doesn't go around and you're okay. If, if the only restriction is that we would have to lock two feet off the porch on the north side of lot two, there's a chance that we could agree to that, but I, we have to look at the plan. I'd say let them, you know. Oh, with, they, they can go back. I mean, I, you know, well, I, I think they have a choice. They yeah. can ask us to vote on it as it stands now, or they can elect to continue this to next meeting and, and bring a plan and talk about what they're willing to do, and then mm -hmm. we can reconsider their proposal. Yeah, by the way, I, in terms of a vi I, I I'm not sh uh, sure I agree with you, Jim. I think Noah's got a point that, you know, what is that approval? If we have such an ordinance, I don't know. Yeah, we're, we're, Do we have such the, an ordinance? You know, but, but again, it's not an ordinance that this board enforces. No. We're not, we're, as our orders always say, we only give relief under the zoning code. Right. We don't give relief under anything else. Matt, would you know that? Do you ever deal with that issue? No, no are you talking about the existing porch at 225 Lansdowne? Yes. yes, the existing house, is that protected in any way as a historic structure? It, 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 only, the only protection is, is that it's in the South Wayne Historic District, okay? And what that means is that if they want to do any structural alteration or improvement, not, not 
not windows or anything like that. It's, it's structural, okay? If they want to alter, demolish, increase, expand anything, they have to come before HARB, okay? HARB is merely advisory. If HARB disagrees, then, then Ms. Blower can go to the Board of Commissioners and the Board of Commissioners can overturn any HARB decision. Okay, they're advisory just like Planning Commission. But yes, they, the, procedural, the procedure is that they go to HARB first for anything. Anything structural, expansion again, or, or demolition. So if they take off the porch, they got to go to HARB to get it. Absolutely. So if they do six inches, six inches or six feet, they got to go to the, they got to go to HARB. Uh, but is that necessary? Yeah. Even though the commissioner said that. Yes. But, but was that originally approved by HARB? Because you've been to HARB once. But that was just for the house, yeah, correct? The new. Yeah, we're setting up a conflict between zoning and the architectural. If the, yeah. the penalty for uh, if, if we put restrictions on lot two uh, and, you know, they are violated, then the porch has to come, come off. But is that enforceable if HARB and the commissioners have to approve the lopping off of the porch? You see what I'm well, saying? Well, yeah, but Matt, you just said that the commissioners <coughs> have the ability to overrule HARB. So what's, if the commissioners said take down four feet at the porch, what's the point of going to HARB? Because Harp could say, don't do it. And the commissioner said, hey, we said it. That's, you have to bring well, it down. If, that, if they agree that they said that, I don't know that they did. This language doesn't tell me that they said that. I think at the very In least the there's an ambiguity. Yeah. yeah, at the very least there's an ambiguity. Mm -hmm. okay. Saying that someone may do something, if, what they really said is you can get a building permit when you meet one of two conditions. But they didn't necessarily give them approval to do one of the two alternatives. That's an issue for another day, maybe possibly another body, that would require first going to HARP. <laughs> just as, just as getting 22. the variance requires them to yeah. first come here. Okay. But the Board of Commissioners could also say no. They could, they could say we don't grant it. The Board of Commissioners already said yes. They didn't say yes to lopping off. They told us we have to modify the porch. We get, we get As a zoning issue, you would, have to, you would have to modify the porch unless you got relief from the zoning code. But that's not the same as saying we're giving you the approvals to take the porch down. Because taking that porch down could have all kinds of consequences having nothing to do with zoning. And you have to go to HARP for that anyway. I mean, I, the design of the house is such that this isn't so, but in some houses, taking that porch down may affect the structure of the house. There are all kinds of issues that might be involved other than just zoning issues. We're here with a portfolio dealing with zoning. That's all. Well, we would, to the extent that we need a demolition permit, we had, uh, I mean, I hope we don't get there, but to the extent that we needed a demolition permit, we would go to the township, and the township would examine it to make sure we're not damaging the structure of the house. I just raised that as an example of issues not involving zoning that may be impl implicated if you were to take the porch down. That's all I'm saying. If it doesn't involve zoning, I'm not sure why we're discussing it. But I well, I think we're we we're saying it because you're assuming that you have an alternative, an ironclad alternative. If you don't get the variance, you can take part of the porch down. Right. I'm just telling you, I don't know if that's true or not. There's nothing in front of me that tells me that that's absolutely so. Maybe so. I don't know what the Board of Commissioners intended. Yeah, but no, one thing we can do, assuming the Board were to grant some measure of relief, is we would make it crystal clear that it only applies to the you know side yard section, a uh, specific section of the zoning code, no other relief under the zoning code, and no other relief under any township ordinances, and we can even specify harm. So, you know, we, we, we basically, the applicant would have an order which by its terms said if there are any issues somewhere else, it's at your, it's at your risk. John, I understand that there's a complication if you go with the original thought that I had of separating the houses by the additional four feet where they, where the porches meet, I guess, is what I'm saying. Where is, the, is that a complication that can be documented and attached to the deed and, and solved? I think, I think an app that, 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 that the, uh, and maybe one of the things mm -hmm. the applicant should be <clears throat> thinking about and the applicant's counsel is coming up with a, you know, they're gonna have to come back with a proposal and they'll either come back with no proposal and say vote this and you'll make your decision free and unfettered or they'll come back with a proposal that is designed to address the issues and you'll make your unfettered vote at that time one of the things they could be doing is to prepare a document 
that backs up their proposal that could be recorded so that we could see that and understand that. So, for example, hypothetically, and without binding the board's vote in any way, let's say they came back and said we only want, we want to take four feet off the envelope near the porch uh, and the rest of the, the house would be okay. Uh, would, be, would, be, would be within its existing envelope. And then they came up with a document to be recorded against the properties that would protect the township. And Mr. Greenfield knows all the kinds of things that a township would want in there, uh, including the ability as a third party beneficiary to enforce it and it would probably also go to the others, but let them make their proposal. And again, when it comes to the board, your voting is, is, is unfettered. You know, we've had discussion back and forth, but when it comes to the board for a final vote, you make the decision. And they heard some of your thoughts and concerns, and they can, uh, the applicant uh, can work to see what, if anything, the applicant can do and what kind of documentation, if any, the applicant could submit for our consideration. And then the board can vote on it. Seems to me that's where we are, Jim. Um, that's fine. We'll take it under. If you do to decide to submit a draft document for a future hearing, if I could see a draft a few days ahead of time so I can no read it, uh, that would be. We'd be happy to do that. Before we uh, <coughs> continue tonight's hearing, we do have another witness who we think you ought to hear tonight so he doesn't have to come. Okay, back. that's fine. And that's uh, Cam Lacey from Harp. Mr. Lacey, you want to come up, please? believe you need to be sworn. Yes. Yes, I do. It's Cam, C-A-M, Lacey, L-A-C-Y. Mr. Lacey, you're a member of HARP? Yes. Uh, you're familiar with the property at 225 Lansdowne? Uh, yes. What's the value of saving the porch? Uh, the, the porch, the, the whole footprint of this building is typical of this time period and Queen Anne and everything in from Harb standpoint would be that we'd want to maintain that there would be no you know I was listening to your discussion about demolition and so forth and if it got to that it would come before the Harb and I could guarantee we would say this is not something we'd want to see again it would go to the commissioners and they would do whatever they want but um, when you start altering a building because of you know, some other external circumstances that don't have to do with, you know, uh, you know, something that's in disrepair or you're, you're adding on or you're making some kind of physical changes. It's something that you really need, you, you should avoid. But this is, a, this is a typical example of a building lot and a footprint and massing that is why Harb is here is to try to maintain that. So that's, it's, it's very important in our, in our, and particularly in South Wayne, it's a porch community. And, and Harv did see the plans for lot two, which is 227 Lansdowne, correct? Yeah, we, we saw that, but it, it was, in this case, we saw the new house without the old house. And we weren't looking at zoning issues, but you're seeing the, the opposite of that now. So I think it's really important you know, in my opinion, that you bring that in and show those relationships. And then I think a, uh, you know, an educated um, sol solution can be figured out. And Harv did approve, uh, did find the, the uh, location on the lot and the massing of the proposed house on lot two to be acceptable, correct? Yeah, the, the massing was in keeping with everything. Um, I don't recall exactly how it was proportioned, but um, it seemed to be within, you know, all the current zoning. You know, there, was no, there was no inconsistencies with that. But I, did, I knew nothing of the other lot and the conditions for that. So our, our charge was to look at the house before us, and it met all the hard criteria. The, the, the style of yeah. it was consistent with the neighborhood? Yeah, it was a, it was a very good example of um, what we'd like to see in new construction that fits in. Uh, Mr. Lacey, just a couple of questions. If yep. they, uh, if there was some solution which were to be approved by the board that basically prevented the porch from being torn down and did not require the porch to be torn down in any fashion, that would comply with current HARB requirements right now and they would not have to come back to you. Is that correct? That's right, yeah. 
but would they have to come back to you to redesign the house on uh, lot two uh, if they need to, because we have not seen the plans for, for that as well, would they have to come back to HARB? Te to technically, get? if they change the footprint, they'd have to come back. I think that would be, you know, something that just would be unavoidable. Even if they just reduce the porch a bit? Yes. Anything that changes the footprint is... Has it to seems come to in. me that the, the one of the things the applicant might want to consider is whatever solution or changes, if any, they submit to the board, they, you know, consider submitting something that doesn't require the removal uh, or alteration of the porch on lot one, and then at least that is preserved under the ordinance and they'd have to go and get their approval from HARB on the redesign of lot two. But at least that would give the board, uh, I mean, if we were to do something that approved taking off part of the porch and also some reconfiguration on lot two, we've got two lots that have right. to go to HARB. It seems to me they might want to consider strongly a solution that eliminates going to HARB on the on, on lot one. Uh, and again, the board has to decide whether it's acceptable. Well, I think that's the applicant's decision as to what they want to do. We've offered some uh, solutions that we thought might be acceptable to the board. <coughs> uh, solutions where you could maintain your present number one house and possibly build number two uh, the way it's drawn, but we don't know since we haven't seen it. So I, I think that's something you have to go back and look at and then bring both pieces so that we can see the two pieces of the puzzle together. Certainly not our intention to, to demolish any portion of the porch on lot one. That's why we're here. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if we had any interest in demolishing the porch on lot one, we could have done it right after we got this approval four years ago, and that would have been the end of the game. But that's really not what we want. We want to keep everything in that. Well, I think it would hurt we the lines of the older building to do that. Okay, so we'll see you next month. You want to request a continuance then and give us whatever we require in the way of a letter? If you need a waiver letter, we'll give you a waiver letter. Okay. Okay, and you extend our period for hearing in the, in the 45 days from the next hearing for deciding. Correct. All right, great. And that's agreeable to everybody? All right. Kathy. Yes. One question. Can you still redesign the Lord 2 building? Less by two feet, is that possible? I think they, have to they don't know don't yet. Know. They have to look. It wasn't my building, so. Yeah, we have to look at that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Instead and of and it might back fit here. in. It's possible that it wasn't going to the edges of the building envelope and they could just slide it over. and. Yeah, unlikely, know. though. It's a narrow building envelope. It's very unlikely that they didn't push the envelope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know why I'm talking this? So we can resolve that and we can make our decision and give to. Uh, the applicant. I think we need to, to see everything to make the decision. Any other questions or comments from the board? No. Is there anybody else in the audience that wanted to speak to this this evening? I don't think so. Okay. No yeah. <laughs> All right. Then uh, anything else from the board that we have to discuss before we adjourn? The only thing is, uh, 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 does the board need it? The Act 46, uh, 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 the two Act 46, uh, orders are actually drafted except for the n num names of the zoning board members because I wasn't sure it was going to attend. Do you need to see those before they go out or something? I don't think those so. Out? Yeah. I mean, they just simply, they, they, they're, they're a simple routine thing. I'll just yeah. send them to Matt tomorrow as soon as I fill in the fill correct in the right. attendees. Okay, if there's no further business then, the meeting's adjourned.